So my name is Bernard Kovac. I'm the head of the World Food Programs Innovation Accelerator. That's our startup accelerator for supporting innovations internally, but also externally. Um, and so actually what I'm going to talk about today is how we can disrupt global hunger. So it's not about incremental improvement, but how can we do make a real difference. Um, so I want to start with a story, uh, and this is actually like in the middle of the picture you see a pastor in Uganda who I met uh, one and a half years ago, and you will wonder, well, they say, this is why is there a metal silo and a plastic silo in this picture? Um, and why is that disruptive at all? Well, we're going to get to this um, just in a second, but first let me start by mo what well, most of you already know. What is the challenge? The challenge of global hunger is that one of, in nine people globally still goes to bed hungry every night, uh, which means that um, uh, children that don't have enough to eat, well, they uh, also have, uh, they don't have the same chances as other people have with the right nutrition. Um, at the same time, when you look at hunger, we've made great progress over the last 20 years reducing it from 19% globally that were considered hungry to only 11%. So at the same time, right now, there is also severe challenges. Um, most of you will have heard this. Right now, there is uh, four famines that are active. This is a picture from South Sudan. So these are children that are lining up for food rations that they severely need to actually just fulfill their basic food security needs. Um, and this is challenges that we face in our day-to-day -day work. At the same time, though, um, our global goal is that by 2030, we want to end hunger, which is SDG number two. Um, and how can we get there? If we just continue with the way we work, uh, we will still not reach a world without hunger in 2030. So we, see, we believe as World Food Program that innovation can really be one of the levers to achieve that. And so as a World Food Program, corporately, um, we already innovate. So historically, we would have delivered food physically either by, you know, by truck or uh, in, a worst, uh, in a last resort scenario by an airplane. But we also right now, we're using widespread uh, cash and vouchers, digital cash. People can actually go to stores where food is available. On the lower right-hand corner, you see, for instance, a woman uh, in a refugee camp in Jordan. She can pay with her iris scan. So she doesn't even need a ca uh, cash card or anything anymore or an ID, she can just go into the store and pay. Um, so that's, if you want, already the innovation that we do as an organization, but there's also the trend, and that's when we talk about uh, disruption. Let's talk about trends that impact us. One is global connectivity. Um, and as of last year, uh, 2015, we already had global connectivity of 44%. So every second person in the world had access to internet. Um, and uh, you may say, well, you know, it's only a lot in developed countries. Well, it's actually not true. In Kenya, it's also 46%. In Colombia, it's 56%. So the connectivity is increasing more and more. So we, when we think ahead and like think about 2020, uh, forecasts go in 60 to 70% of the world's population will have internet access. If companies like Google or Facebook are successful, maybe even all on the people on the world will have basic internet access. So these are things that we need to think about uh, when we plan for well, economic empowerment, but also interventions that we would plan as an uh, uh, as, as a emergency uh, organization. The second uh, trend is that I want to highlight is something that, uh, I, uh, that Peter Diamandis, is the co-founder of Singularity University and XPRIZE, um, is advocating for is the cost of launching a tech startup uh, is significantly reduced. In two, year 2000, it still cost $5 million to actually launch a tech startup. Um, Five years later, it was already only $500,000, how that? Well, open source technology, horizontal scaling. Uh, another four years later, it was $50,000 through cloud computing, Amazon Web Services. Um, and then in 2011, it was only $5,000. Uh, so when you think about that, what you just saw before, uh, and now this picture is, essentially means that everybody who has basic internet access and $5,000 can now start a new tech startup. Um, and this is, I think, important to keep in the back of our mind in the work that we're doing. And so at the World Food Program, we actually started our uh, support system to support is innovation systematically, which is our innovation accelerator. So we provide uh, uh, funding, so fifty to $100,000. We provide coaching, but also uh, access to our experts and people in our field operations. We're active in 83 countries uh, to actually make innovations happen.
So these are, in, out of that work over the last one and a half years in our operation, uh, we, I want to share with you a couple of learnings that we have actually realized uh, in our operation in the World Food Program Innovation Accelerator. Um, and these six learnings, I'm going to go one by one, is um, the first is focus on the user. Now I'm back with our story with the silo. Um, for years, people have tried to give away silos for free. So what the team on the ground has done, essentially they listened to the people and said, okay, what do you really need? And instead of training people on like 20 different farming techniques, they said, okay, let's focus on just one thing. Let's get one thing right, and that's post-harvest handling. Um, and they, instead of giving it away for free, it's locally produced and it's actually being sold to people. So. Uh, by doing this, they were able to sell 80,000 of those silos within one year in Uganda alone. Um, and this is really interesting because the smallholder, uh, smallholder farmers, they can triple their household income because they don't have to sell to traders anymore when uh, everybody's harvesting. They can actually store it up to a year in that silo uh, and then sell when the market price is better or keep it for them just for the basic food security. Um, the second learning is applying lean startup. And this is really one of the key aspects of how also Google, Facebook, or Y Combinator, really leaders in innovation field actually work. Um, this is an example of what we've done just a month ago, uh, our colleague Human of the World Food Program. So we tested uh, a blockchain uh, authentication for cash-based transfers. So uh, the, uh, blockchain is a widespread concept now in uh, private sector and it's very popular. Uh, and it may be one of the disruptive technologies as well. Um, and one thing, how do, you, how do you learn when it's actually working is you actually have to test it. So what he went on with colleagues actually uh, with a hundred um, hungry people actually they did cash-based transfers and authenticated them. Uh, this picture is uh, just an example. They only started in December and already now we have the learnings of whether it's successful or not. Um, the third learning is about <coughs> leapfrog disruption through technology. And a lot of you will know the example of M-Pesa or um, Safaricom. Uh, so people who would not have had a banking account before, they get a mobile phone, and with that mobile phone, all of a sudden they have uh, a bank account. So it's not that you have to go like uh, we did in other countries, go from, well, you have no bank account, you get to a normal bank account, you go to a digital. No, you can go directly. You have all of a sudden thousands, hundreds of thousands of people uh, in Africa have banking accounts. Um, and this example here is actually a project that we've supported in El Salvador using real-time data monitoring. So all the paper that you see on the table there is being replaced by the small smartphone device that you see in front. Um, so and there's um, a learning, if you want, and there's efficiency gains just using a digital product. At the same time, through the real-time data monitoring, uh, the government in El Salvador will have real-time data at their hands to optimize their programs. So right now, we believe that we can even increase um, the coverage of the program using the same amount of money for up to 30 to 40 percent, uh, 30 to 40 percent more people with the same amount of money. Um, uh, the next uh, learning is you need to build partnerships, and that's important specifically when you want to disrupt something, you need to have the critical skill sets and the critical connections on board, which means you need to work with host communities, people who are uh, embedded with the people that are actually affected by it, having the real experts that can do something, but also maybe the unusual partners uh, for the development space that could mean let's work with private sector companies. Obviously, that's not always easy, and it may mean that it's uh, uh, a jump into the cold water in the first place, but uh, the uh, impacts of those can be uh, significant. This is an example of uh, the Farm to Market Alliance where, for instance, we as World Food Program partner with different private sector organizations to actually achieve more impact for smallholder farmers together. Um, um, Second to last is harness the power of global products. And what I highlight here is so-called Share the Meal app. Um, if you, everybody, you can download if you have a smartphone on Android or Apple, uh, and with one push on your smartphone, you can donate 40 cents. And with 40 cents, you can provide meals for a child for a day. Um, and why is that important? So in, uh, in, uh, in the beginning, before this was launched, people thought, well, maybe smartphone apps, that's just something that's going to be active in one market. 
as a matter of fact, this app is right now available in nine languages globally. Um, and if you think about it also, like one of the most successful uh, donors also is actually even people from emerging markets that are also donating to this. Um, so what you've seen before, like the picture for uh, like the famine in South Sudan, so the app is actually fundraising right now specifically for uh, the emergency appeal for South Sudan for uh, providing food to children there. Um, and then the last learning um, is about the next Mark Zuckerberg might be from emerging market. So in the left of the picture, you actually see Randolph Owusu. He was attending one of our programs. Uh, Forbes magazine dubbed him as the Mark Zuckerberg from Ghana. Um, and the real learning out of that is most likely with the connectivity and the cost of launching a startup, chances of people uh, in emerging markets or developing countries actually becoming the next Mark Zuckerberg haven't been uh, better than any uh, any time before in history. So most likely we will still see this. Um, and so as World Food Program, we actually just launched a challenge for food in emergency um, where we're looking for interesting uh, ideas for people who can provide food solutions just for after an emergency hits you. Um, and this is it's still active until the 10th of March. Uh, and it's open for entrepreneurs, academia, NGOs. And the interesting fact is that the most submissions for that we've actually received so far from Africa. Uh, so it's not that we, or even on these types of challenges, we already see that this is happening. Um, so with this, I wanted to Thank you very much, and if you want to find out more, you can find us on the internet or World Food Program Facebook or on Twitter. Thank you very much.